Hey everybody, welcome to part 4 of Let's Make a Model Battle Wagons series. And uh, we have the, essentially the undercarriage and fully done for the battle wagon, for both of them. Um, like I said, we would have pretty much uh, on assembly, the only thing I want to point out here is put one side on to the floor, floor plate and then put this little back plate in and then the second side plate on because it won't fit if you glue both side plates on before putting this in. Um, that will be talked about again in the Fortress Monastery blog post. I'm going to have pictures of, I have some pictures of in progress work, so I'll be able to post it up there on the blog and talk about it a bit. So, um, look out for that coming soon. If not already up there by the time this video is up, probably won't be up there until the, until the next day. But anyway, um, once I assembled it, I didn't attach the tires, I attached the tires and treads after I painted it up. So once it was assembled, I spray painted it chaos black. And one thing I suggest you doing with vehicles um, is, at the very least, spray painting the sprues black, both sides, because it just saves up a lot of time for painting them. Um, and then you can clip them out, assemble what you need to, and then uh, put um, paint it up as you go, or paint, and then clip it out and continue painting. For example. Um, if they're smaller pieces, you might want to just clip off a section of the sprue with it so you can hold the sprue and paint the pieces and then clip it off and then clean up and then paint anything you need to clean up wise. Like if you can't get to a certain part because of the sprue, uh, paint that and put it on. But anyway, I, don't, I didn't do that for this model obviously. So uh, I'm just going to paint, uh, I'm going to base coat and go at, and do that as I go instead of just spray painting the entire sprues. So I don't, it's too cold to really spray paint, even though I was able to spray paint these chassis because of the, there was a break in the weather. And uh, my spray can is running low, so I won't be able to do it. Anyway, um, once it was base coated, I gave an undercoat of tin bits, a very liberal undercoat, very much vibrant in tin bits. It's a very cool color, I really like it. It works really well for like a base coat for golds, especially like old tarnished golds. And uh, it works really well for a base coat for rusted over metal and stuff like that. Um, so once the tin bits was dried, I gave it a very liberal dry brush. Not quite a dry brush, not quite a wet brush, but um, somewhere in between, more towards the drier end of bulk gum metal over the entire chassis as well. And then I gave some color. I gave a lit purple here, here, and here for both battle wagons and then once I did that I put the treads and tires attached them to the chassis and then washed the entire thing with Devlin mud wash to get into all the recesses now I did it after attaching the tires and treads because I wanted to wash the tires and treads as well and um, because now the model can sit like it'll normally be sitting so the wash will get into all the recesses that you want to get into um, you might have to do it in a couple of sections because um, you uh, you know, to hold it and stuff, and you start getting crazy with the wash. And then once the wash is dry, I pretty much here it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this section. Uh, the Fortress Monastery will have a post up on it soon, probably the next day after this video, about the um, assembling in progress with some progress pictures and me talking about it a bit there, and then um, that'll be it for that. The next step, however will be to um, pretty much from here on in it's just to build up off of this um, this this part here so when this part's done everything we do is going to be added to it to make it more look more like a battle wagon um, just to show you we're following pretty much the instruction book that comes with the, um, the kit we just finished this part part three and four so we did one two for the first thing three and four now and what we're going to do next is 5 and 6, where we attach these pieces to the sides, where they go here. And then we're going to attach these pieces to there. So pretty much on the battle I can get itself, those pieces are going to go here on the sides. And then around here is going to be where you put those door stuff. And we're just going to do that, uh, that for that anyway, for, for the battle I can get itself. Um, paint them up, glue them on here. So it should be a relatively quick go once I actually get time to do it. 
What I'm going to do as well is, let me reach for him, um, the, remember the battle wagon and boarding plank? As I drop it, that I have, the bits. I'm going to assemble those and paint them up as well on this part, as, uh, this part just to get them ready to put onto the battle wagon so A, I don't forget to put them onto it, and B, um, they'll be ready to put onto it. <laughs> Because I still don't know exactly where I'm going to put them in terms of the vehicle and how I'm going to do it. I'll figure it out though. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this section. As far as this kit goes, I like the kit. It's, it, it assembles pretty easily. Now I heard the orc truck kit was kind of, not a nightmare, but kind of a pain. Especially when it comes to painting after assembly. But the battle lighting kit, of course, I wouldn't, it would probably be hard to paint this after assembly too. But um, as far as assembly goes, it's pretty good. Like, I like it. Because I like it the way it's set up more so than the Rhino and the, even the Land Raider set up. Because even though the Rhino and Land Raider have little insets on parts that snap together, quote unquote, you know, essentially snap, quote unquote, but it's not really snapping. It's you put the glue in there and that's where they sit to sit correctly. Um, there's still a little bit of fidgeting that can go on with the Rhino and the Land Raider, although they do work, they do assemble pretty well. But this just fits together a lot more smoothly. Um, Although the Landmate is still one of my favorite vehicles, that's beside the point. So that's one thing I'll say about this kit is it assembles pretty pretty easily. Especially if you just follow the directions and uh, drive fit before you actually put it together. So um, that's pretty much it. Next time we do a video for this series for the Battle Wagons, it'll have the, um, the side plates and the door part, the beginnings of the, the cab section put on here as well. So um, from here on in, we're slowly looking more and more like the Battle Wagons. So until next time, um, take it easy.